Hey guys, um, I realized that some of my comments in my Astara video were kind of confusing and I promised you that I would elaborate a bit about what I wanted to do as far as becoming clergy. So this video is going to be about that and it's probably going to be a few parts warning you now because there's a lot I want to say about clergy and while I'm on the topic I thought I'd do kind of a clergy series um, because it's a very important topic and it's causing a lot of controversy actually in the pagan community. So I mentioned that I wanted to be a high priestess and the reason I use the term high priestess is because it is the most easily recognizable term in the pagan community for a clergy woman. I accept the fact that I will not be technically a high priestess in many people's eyes because I will always remain solitary until starting my coven unless I find a coven that suits me. Most people to be termed high priestess will have had to study in a coven for years and years, attaining many degrees as high as they can really go, most of them. Some of them only have to achieve second degree, in fact that's kind of standard, before you can be a priestess and start your own coven. The title high priestess is bestowed on people after their third degree when they have their own coven and um, they're more settled in that respect. I will use the term priestess even though I will never have ha achieved my second degree, um, but there's no real other term to use. I still use the, the title high priestess when I'm describing what I want because I can't just say priestess, it confuses people so much. I do further expound on that idea and explain that while I will be clergy, I will not be a high priestess unless the situation occurs that I find a coven and train with them for years and years, but I'm not really counting on that. Um, so I wanted to explain that. That's the first way you can become a high priestess, or a priestess in general. You train through a coven. The second way that some people do is go to a seminary. There are only two that I know of in the United States. Uh, one is Cherry Hill, and it's accredited by its state, but it is not technically accredited. They have a master's program there, like most seminaries do. It is not the one I'm going to. Um, well, I'm going to go to in the future. It doesn't suit me. I feel like, I don't know, my style of learning <laughs> isn't really suited to a master's program. So that's my personal choice. Um, I don't place much value personally in a master's degree in this religion. Um, there have only been a few circumstances where it might be beneficial to some clergy to have a master's. And that was when I was in PSA, they were looking for people to do a religious panel and they asked us if we had any pagan clergy in the area that we were aware of that had master's degrees and we weren't aware of any. Uh, we only knew a few high priestesses at that time. So we had to say no and they just went, out, went without a pagan representative in that panel. That's about it. I mean, chances are if you're leading a coven, your coveners aren't going to be like, hey, you don't have a master's degree, so you don't know anything. I'm not devaluing that. It's just not what I feel I need at this time. I might eventually go and get a master's, but it's also the fact that I'm so burnt out on school. <laughs> I'm about to graduate in a few weeks, and I'm just ready to be done with it for now. Um, but there is another seminary in Albuquerque, or just outside Al Albuquerque, called Ardantane. And the reason it appealed to me was because Amber Kay and Ashley Aaron Kay both teach there. And because it's not as structured, I guess. It's not as expensive. And it seemed more suited to what I'm looking for personally. So that's why I'm looking at Ardantan. The other way to become a priestess um, is to have the title bestowed upon you by the other by people in the community after years of study. There are some people that you will meet that are just so knowledgeable without being part of a coven or anything like that after, that they've been studying for so long that you just know that they have the knowledge that they need to have that title. In some cases they will act in that capacity, in some cases they won't. But um, it's kind of a t term of respect that's given to some people sometimes. So those are basically the main three ways you can become clergy. Um, and they're kind of disputed now. 
it depends on what you want to do, technically. I mean, obviously you're not going to be a British traditional clergy person if you go to Ardantane or Cherry Hill. I mean, you can't, but it's not going to automatically happen. Like, <laughs> they're not going to be like, oh, you studied for five years at Ardantane and we, you should lead one of our covens even though you've never been initiated. You will still have to be initiated in your tradition if you want to lead a coven in that respect. Because I'm looking at leading an eclectic coven, I have a little more freedom. I'm not saying that the requirements are any more lax, technically, as far as learning or the skills you need. I'm just saying it's different. So obviously you can combine any or all of those ways to become clergy, seminary, initiation into a coven and study through them, and and the title being bestowed upon you by another. So why do people become clergy? It seems like a lot of work for who knows what, really. Um, there are a lot of reasons, and if I'm to believe what a lot of people have told me online, people don't do it because they want to. There have been very few clergy members that I have talked to online that have said, I'd always wanted to be a high priestess, and... I studied and studied for years, and then I became one, and I'm happy now. They were all like, we needed a high priestess, so I became a high priestess. I didn't want to, but I did. And while it, there is a necessity to the role of clergy, that's not very promising. I realized that it's been become dangerous online or in the pagan community to say that you want to be a high priestess or clergy of any sort, but that's not really what I wanted to hear, and I'm sure a lot of people didn't really want to hear that. I know if I was in a coven and my high priestess was like, hey, I just became a high priestess because we needed one. So, yeah, that's what you get. I'd probably leave. I'm not saying that they have any less to offer their coveners, but it's not the passion that I would want from a high priestess. You might be wondering why I said that it's dangerous to say that you want to become clergy. There's an overwhelming sense of fear of clergy, um, of mistrust, and dislike, pretty much. Um, it might seem like I'm exaggerating a bit, but I'm really not. If you say that you want to be a high priestess, immediately they say, why do you want that power? Which is a good question. It's a valid question because there are a lot of people who will abuse the power. And because of those people, there's a dim view of clergy. There are very few good clergy people in my area. I've only met one that I would have actually studied under. And it's hard to find good, solid, dependable passionate clergy who are really in that position because they deserve it in terms of knowledge, respect for others, passion, etc. Or that just have common decency. So people will think that anyone who says they want to be clergy is automatically out for a power trip. It's kind of an ego maniac or something. But there are people who are genuinely called to that path, just as there are people who are called to any path. And I think the Hagen community should be open to those people as well, while still kind of keeping an eye out for the people who we should kind of push away from the path. Because it does take a lot to be clergy, a lot more than most people realize. And you have to be suited for that position.